Well, today on Nation, a Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking all about the five things you need to have to have an amazing company. Now, maybe you have a great company, maybe you think you could be better, but these are my thoughts, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Hopefully you're having a fantastic day and hopefully you are, if not in spring, close to spring really cracking off. Uh, I know we are and uh, we're crazy busy at WCR, so I know a lot of you are busy. So that's fantastic. It's fantastic. But I want to start off by prefacing, uh, I don't know anything. I'm just some dummy who sits in front of a camera. I've said that a thousand times, but these are my opinions of the things that you have to have to have that company you really want. Now, some of you just wanna have like an owner operator company, you don't need to be bigger, a little bit more stronger, better pricing, something like that, awesome. Growth is doesn't mean being big, it just means being better. But if you wanna take a window cleaning company and you wanna have a machine that produces great money for you, great frequency, you have less lows, you have better just strength in the company. These are the things I think that you need to have. Really, really need to have. And I'm gonna go over them and yeah. If you're watching uh, this on YouTube, by the way, podcast is everywhere podcasts are. You can listen to it all the time. We have like 10 times more people listen to it than watch it, but if you wanna watch it, it's on windowcleaner.com or uh, Window Cleaner Resources uh, YouTube page, and that's where the conversation is. So if you think there's something else I'm missing, please let me know. Let's have a conversation. I wanna know about it. But I'm gonna start right off with the number one thing I think that any real strong company has to have, and it's SEO. Now, I know, some of you go, well, I have great presence when I search, you know, this window cleaning, this, 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 this. But A, are you checking in an incognito view? And B, are you searching all the terms you think people are going or just like one or two or a couple? Understand that SEO is everything. There's lots of versions, right? A customer may type in window cleaner near me. Another customer may put window cleaning near me. You have to rank for both of those. Plus there's also window washer, window washing, clean windows, getting my windows clean. Like there's so many pieces to the puzzle of SEO. So when people are like, yeah, no, I do it myself. You know what? I rank great. Cool. Do you think you could be better in anything else? And if not, if your answer is no and it's fantastic, then high five. But so many companies are lacking in the SEO world. Now, SEO will be the number one way you get new customers, period. It will be through your website. Now, there's lots of things to give it to the website, but SEO is people who just find it organically. They Google search. They search Bing or what other crazy search. I don't know why you would search anything but Google. I always focus on Google. But if you are ranking for that, you'll be found. They'll find your website. They'll put your website first. SEO is a ranking, right? When you look at something and you type it in, you say window window cleaning near me. Just type that in. And when stuff pulls up, obviously, if you're not in incognito mode, it knows your business is the closest to you. So you're like, I pop up first. Yep, incognito view. Don't even put near me, put it in your city. And search a bunch of terms. Now you see people pop up and they're in the listings and you're like, oh man, this guy must be big, he's at the top. Google doesn't know that or care about that. They don't care if you're big. They care that it's the best thing for their customer. And SEO is the backside, search engine optimization. And I have people ask me literally weekly, who I I say, so if you're listening, I'm gonna give you uh, the name of the person I always talk about, but it's Monk SEO, Monk, M-O-N-K SEO. They're by far the best company I've ever used. Um, Super good dudes, they're actually window cleaners. Anyway, 
If you're using a company, do not go, well, this guy's 99 bucks. I'll... It's so fake. The problem with SEO is that it does take a little time to get there. It's like running uphill in the sand. It, you have to keep with it or you fall back down. And the problem is, is there's so many garbage companies out there. There's so many just like cover companies who are like, hey, pay us for SEO. And then you do and you're like, it just, I don't know, it just hasn't, you're gonna get bigger. You're gonna get more popular. You're gonna just put your website out there more and just some organic may happen. But you're like, yeah, it's just not doing well. Well, let me try a few things. Well, it's six months. You pay them a bunch of money. They didn't do anything. They literally took your money. They pretended to do something and there's nowhere to search. I've seen reports, by the way, from other companies who have searched and tried to see what is done in the SEO world for your business and people who have been paying for years have zero. I know there's companies out there. So just be careful. Whoever you choose, it has to be good. It's so hard. There is so much more garbage than there is good. I've gone through probably, personally, I would say three three companies, I think, before I ended up finding Monk, which was uh, Cartwright had owned the company, uh, that side of it before. And what they do is just, it, it, it's phenomenal compared to other people. So not a plug for them, but just find a good company and get SEO. SEO is a cost to having your business, you will pay forever. You know, everybody buys a car and they're like, well, when I pay it off, and they never pay it off. And they always have a car payment. You can do that same thing with your companies, just always have a car payment, right? Lease cars, maybe. Well, for mileage might not be good, but if you buy it, have it for two years, three years, sell it, buy it, you're just, that cost of the car is in business, that's SEO. Do not stop your SEO in the winter. I know I've had how many people say that they're thinking about doing that, save some money, that you lose everything you've done. So why even have it if you're gonna lose it all? But SEO, to have an amazing company be SEO because that means that is the number one way people find a new company. And if you're first, you're the company they find. Then it gets into your clothes, right? Book them over the phone, done. If you're on the second page of Google or down the list, no one is calling the first one, then calling the second one, then calling the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and then hitting you in the ninth spot. It's just not happening. Even if the first two or three don't answer, they're just like, ugh, I'm not doing this. Understand that the consumer's credibility is where you pop up on that list, and SEO is absolutely so important. Okay, that's the first thing. If you have SEO or you found a good company, perfect. If you're using Monk, even better. He's a super rad dude. Anyway, the next thing that I think every company should have is good, and dare I say amazing, print. Print, like real paper print. Like, you know, door hangers, trifolds. Uh, if you're in commercial properties, a good commercial bid packet. I want something that blows people away. I wanna get something from somebody to be like, wow, geez, man, this like piece feels good. It's amazing, the, the art is done professionally. It's not you making it. You hired somebody, it's awesome. That's where things differentiate you from a different company. Now again, you know uh, Steve from At Cost Printing here, uh, the print department, by the way, print.windowcleaner.com. He's the guy that I've known for years um, obviously, it's tethered to WCR, so you have to say that. I don't. I don't have to say that at all. Their stuff that they do is awesome. Their designers are great. Uh, Jill, you've probably talked to her over there. So anyway, I always have them on, and people go, well, isn't print kind of dead? It's absolutely not. It may be dead for a lot of people, and that is why you stand out. But when somebody shows up, and they have that cruddy business card from Office Depot, I don't think even exists anymore from Staples. <laughs> it's just white and it's got like that like raised and you're like, oh, all right. I, I just instantly assume you don't care. If you hand me an awesome, like you guys have probably seen my business cards if you've met me in person and I've given you one. They are triple stacked painted sides, meaning it's a trifecta paper. There's like another color paint, uh, color paper in between. So sandwich, so it's like white, and then big thick red and then white. It's a satin feel. 
things are so big, I don't know that you could bend it on accident. When you get that card, you go, dang, okay. Right? That should be everything. Your bid packets, if you're doing that, you know I've talked about that. Go back, watch the episodes. Spend $10 a packet. Easy. I'm like, wow, $10. Yeah. How many of you are spending money to get leads? How many of you are paying? Like, you're talking commercial. I land one commercial and it's a comma. It's it's over $1,000 for a commercial building. Of course, I'm going to give them an amazing packet because I'm going to get that back. You're investing. You're not spending. Print is so important. So important. That's besides EDDM and everything else. You have to have good print. There are so many different... Th- but if you're listening and you're bored or you're thinking about it later, it's just print.windowcleaner.com. Just go to that, that site and just like look at all the templates. Look at all the things that are offered and you're like, wow, there's so many things I could get. There is. And when the piece is designed, one piece designed professionally, you can have that person break it into any size you want and it's the same feel. You know I'm a huge proponent of if I got business cards, envelopes, uh, trifolds, uh, flyers, door hangers, right? All of those are built from the same type template. If I have a designer build one, I'll go flyer because it's the biggest. I have them break that down for every other piece so that every piece that you have currently is in the same scope, the same feel, the same everything. That is what makes the difference. And we're talking about the pieces of the puzzle. You're filling in everything. That's why we're talking digital. We're talking paper. People tend to miss that. They go, well, I only get EDDM. Awesome if you do, do EDDM right. Did a podcast on that too. But there's so many other pieces that aren't just EDDM in the print world that you really, really, really should have. If you're like, well, we're paperless. I guess that's cool. But you're just missing out on so many things. It just doesn't make sense. So print is amazing. Another thing that I think that everybody should do, but do right, is Facebook ads. Facebook ads. I know. If you're young and you're watching, you're like, dude, I don't even know anybody on Facebook. Cool. You're not selling window cleaning to your friends. You're selling it to the person who's going to buy it. And who is that? It's like 48 to... 69 year old people where are they they're on facebook and facebook is so targeted you can create ads you can change your ad spend but best thing is if you pick one thing away from ads is the best thing about digital media is you can split test meaning you change your ad every single day just one piece here's your ad you put it all up you're like oh it's good yeah it's the best ad ever no it's not You have no idea. I've not met anybody ever in the history of ever who's created one ad out of thin air and it's been the best ad ever. just doesn't happen. You have to split test it, see what resonates, what creates triggers. You have the ad, you post it up for a day, you go, okay, cool, I got two calls. Okay, now we change the background color. We change the text color. Just one little change. Maybe it's the font. One change. Put it out. Let it sit for a day, two days. Well, we got four calls. Cool. Keep that change. Change one other thing. We got one call. Okay. Go back. Change it to how it was. Then change one other thing. See, split testing is you're changing every little bit and basically letting the market tell you what works. Now, if you don't do this, you automatically think the thing you built is the best because you built it. If you didn't, you would change something, right? But you're not your target market, and you're kind of partial to the things you make. If you go to, say, a Canva or something, say you get templates, it's really easy to change it to make what you are, and now you can just change one single thing. It doesn't have to be super hard. In fact, the change can take you five minutes. You throw it back up there, they usually take about an hour or two, you know, Check and make sure your ad is okay and then approve it. Now you got a new ad. It's so active. You have to be active to find what it is. Now after a year or two, you'll have an ad, two ads. You'll have a gutter cleaning ad and a uh, house washing ad and a window cleaning ad that you've honed in so well you know what works. Now 
It's like an ATM. Post it up. If I know that every ad I put out there, that I get five times more back than I spend, then I would spend a ton. As much as you can handle. Because I'm not spending money. Advertising is not spending. It's only spending if you don't get anything out of it. That's spending money. But if I put an ad up and it brings me back $5,000, then you got $5,000. Like, if you put an ad out, I spend $1,000 to put this ad out, it brings me in $6,000, take 1000 pay myself back for the 1000 worth of ads. I made five, I just got $5,000 worth of new work. I got $5,000. I didn't spend anything. I paid myself back. See, when you find out that these guys are spending, you know, $10,000 a day in Facebook ads, you're like, how is this a thing? How are they spending so much money? It's because they know it brings back the returns. As the returns come back, it's not spending to, well, I can't spend that much. You're not spending anything. If you put $10,000 worth of ads out and you get $80,000 back, you done, you made $70,000, right? See the path in advertising. Advertising is really hard for people to sometimes separate spending worth investing, right? If I, if you're like, oh, I really wanna do Facebook ads, I was like, hey, I'll, sp- I'll, I'll, I'll pay for all of it and then just take that money out of the thing. You'd be like, oh, heck yeah. Because you're just getting the profit. That's what is happening. You're just paying yourself back. Okay. Off my high horse for that. But I have to say, my shameless plug of the day, uh, that wasn't meant to rhyme. But I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. And uh, man, it is absolutely going crazy here. I would love nothing more than to be your rep, put in your orders. It's as simple as literally, if you're in there, put everything in your cart, just hit save this cart and shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. Just shoot it over and be like, yo, my cart is good. Everything, we can save. Cards on file, verify the address, it's so simple, I take care of everything. If you don't wanna have to do that or have time to do that or any of that, you can literally text me and be like, yo, I need a 12 pack of Etteray, uh 18 inch rubber. Uh, I need, just tell me the items. I'll put everything together. I can make it so easy. Some of you send me SKUs and like products. Dude, that's awesome by the way. That's like cheating for me. But even if you don't do that, I can take care of it. I wanna make it so absolutely easy for you. And here's the truth on it. It doesn't cost you anything extra to have a rep. For questions, for pricing, for anything you want, I wanna be that guy. And for you, high-fiving me back is to let me put orders in. And your orders cost the same if you do it or if I do it, but I get credit for it. And I can afford to buy a new razor since I cut myself shaving this morning. So thank you for that. Uh, Also, if you haven't yet gotten a subscription to the American Window Cleaner Magazine, AWC, the new issue is out. It is so absolutely fantastic. Uh, the new redesign, everything in here uh, from the design to the look to the feel to the ads to the everything in here is absolutely new and it is so phenomenally done. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier than where this is going. We got a uh, new editor also. I mean, look at this. That's T squeegee. So good. So good. And of course, the magazine always comes with the sticker sheet. Every single month, you get a sticker sheet. And it's custom window cleaning stickers for everything. Be a nerd like me. This is your industry. Support the industry. Get smarter, better, and do something your neighbor or your competition's not. Just go to awcmag.com and get a subscription. I know you haven't gotten one yet, so go get one. Long shameless plug. Okay. So anyway, back to it. The next thing you have to have, in my opinion, is reviews. I feel like this is so overlooked as something you can control. Now, yes, there's programs like um, good job, good, nice job, nice job. Um, Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, Nice job does fantastic at this. It's a program that literally helps you get those reviews, puts them, it automatically helps your customer get them on Google. 
Um, but it's, it's something that's completely in your control. If you have 500 reviews and the next guy has 20, who do you think somebody's going to call? Who do you think instantly has more credibility? Understand this, that unless you piss Google off and they delete your stuff, which definitely can happen, those reviews could be there for 20 years. You could have 20 years of reviews, thousands of reviews. This would be like a no-brainer to capture every single person. Reviews are so valuable. They make credibility and create referrals from strangers. Now, you know when you get a referral, it's a done deal. It's close. Hey, yeah, uh, Karen used you. She loved you. I'd like to uh, have you do my windows. You're instantly going to get that. Give them a price. You'll have it. They trust Karen, so they instantly trust you. That's what reviews do. If 500 people give you a five star, by the way, it's totally cool if a couple people give you ones, it makes you real. But you got a 4.9 and you got a thousand reviews, I'm instantly like, dang, dang, this company for sure is legit. I absolutely trust you. This other one has three reviews. Mm, what is that? Their mom, their wife, maybe their one customer they could convince. Right? Reviews are incredibly important and it is something you can control by just creating a regimen of getting them. Just making it something that you actively get. So when a job is done, you ask them, I'd love a review. Maybe you make business cards that say, thank you so much. And on the back is a QR code that they can click to go right to your Google page to leave a review. Make it easy. I'll tell you. When you go somewhere and you go, oh, we would love a review. Oh, absolutely. We'll get you a review. You did such a good job. I'm happy to do it. You leave and they never post a review. It's because they had to do work to get there. And they're like, yeah, make it easy. Make it easy. Make it easy. If you're doing window clings, you could do a QR code to your website for rebooking, right? Scheduling, response a bit if you're using it phenomenal product. But for this, make it just a card that just says, thank you so much for letting us help the team. And then sign the front of the card. Have each person sign a bunch of them, you know, in the truck and hand them to people. And when you're all done, say, hey, thank you. Here's just a thank you from all of us. And on the back of that, flip it over, show them, is a QR code. All you have to do is hold your camera up to it. It'll bring you right to our Google page. We would love you to give us an honest review. Just let them know. Reviews go so far for us. It helps everybody find out about us and gets the word out. What does that do now when 90% of the people you have give you reviews? Think of those numbers. Think of what that does for your business. Think about the growth. If you just say, give me a review. Uh, yeah, Google. Just Google our company. XYZ window washing in Raleigh, North Carolina, the best company, and you'll find it. Nobody's doing that. Make it easy, get the reviews. If you're hiring a company, I have personally used Nice Job. Nice Job rocks, they do phenomenal. In fact, most of the companies that you see in window cleaning that have tons of reviews are using Nice Job. Uh, little cheat code there. But there's ways to do it on your own too. Again, go back to print, get some business cards. How much does that cost you? 30 bucks? 50 bucks, 80 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks for five years worth of reviews. Yes, please. Be active and do your follow ups and reviews. If you're not using a nice job because they do the follow ups, but if you're doing it yourself, you hand them and you didn't get anything, call them the next day. Hey, how'd everything look? Oh, great. Awesome. Hey, if you still have that card that we gave you, we would love a review. Uh, just go ahead and click that. And you know what? I'm going to email you over our Google page too. So if you do send us a review, we're a family owned business and you know, reviews absolutely help. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Follow up with them. If there's still no review from them a week later, send another email. Hey, we hope everything was great. We can't wait to see you in six months, but uh, if you haven't yet, Go ahead and uh, give us a review. We mean the world to us. And you're like, oh, we'll book. No one remembers you asked for a review today. And then a week later, you asked for a review. You're not bugging them. To you, it's I asked them twice in a row. To them, they had a week of life. 
you're the reason you're holding yourself back. Your brain is what's stopping you from doing some of these things because you think it's pestering or whatever. It's business. It absolutely is business. It's business. It's business, brah. <laughs> uh, side note on everything. I have teenage daughters and we just uh, <laughs> tried to talk in the new slang and we were going over slang words and things. So I apologize if I use any young slang, but it's still ingrained in my head. No cap. Anyway, uh, the repeat process is the last one I want to talk about because it's another one that absolutely is forgotten. And I know a ton of you watch this, a ton of you have heard me say the dentist closed a thousand times, and a ton of you want me to stop. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stop. It's the absolute most valuable thing that you can do to grow your business. SEO brings in new customers. Repeat dentist close keeps your customers coming back, not leaving, but getting more frequency. Again, you've heard me say this. I know you're probably working right now, which by the way, if you are, say what's up. High five for being amazing. But how many customers have you done? Some of you go and they go, man, Dude, I've had a thousand, I got a thousand customers in my books. Sweet, you're doing a thousand customers every six months? Well, no, like those are like, you know, sometimes they're over one, one time jobs and you know, some, they're like when they get ready, they, okay, what if you had a thousand customers that did their job twice a year? That's 2000 jobs in one year. Some of you are like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm totally do that. I do that now. Why would, why would I need that? I do that now. Okay. So if you did 2,000 jobs, your average ticket, say 300 bucks, that's $600,000 worth of work. Now, some of you have 50 customers. It still applies to you. Don't get the 1,000. I just know that people brag about having so many customers, but no one brags about how many they do all the time or regular or you schedule you go hey cool thanks for thanks for using me call me when you need me and then you just wait like, well that's not running a business that's working somewhere and hoping the business can run for you run your business when the whole job's done do the dentist close now that means that if you had a thousand customers which a lot of you brag about a lot of you do that's $600,000 of work that you're going to be doing every year that's in the calendar. Every job from there is new. Every Facebook ad that brings in something's new. Every SEO is new. You're adding to that. And every person that comes in is going to have you for every six months. Dude, the dentist closed. What are you doing? Hard truth. There's a lot of you out there who go and clean a window and go, cool, all right, well, let's go get another customer. Let's go find one. Like that's somehow done and like you're on to the net you know a one-time customer a customer that you're not actively scheduling and getting them in there is not using you frequently you're just hoping they come back and what happens is they call you in two years because the windows are so dirty you're gonna work twice as hard to have once every two years and you don't know when they're coming back and that's even if they remember they had you two years ago which they won't they end up then hiring somebody else because they're like, I don't know, what was it? What was that? Clear view, new view, something view. Ah, uh, guess what? Your competition also has view in their name. They call and go, I think you guys had me in two years because you've had people call you. I think you guys have done service before. No, we don't have you in the system, but we'd love to give you it. It happens all the time. Take control. This is your business. You control it. You control it. Control the repeat process. You know, just so you know, again, I don't have too many people who go off on this, but I just want to genuinely let you know that it's your business. You can run it however you want and it's right because it's your business. If in your business you want it to have more growth, you want it to be stronger, you want it to be bigger, you want to have more crews, more money, more any of that, it is not the economy's fault 
or all the new guys in your area or those TikTok door knockers. It's not any of that. If you want it to be bigger, stronger, better, it's up to you. So many times I have people let me know and they're like, you know, business has really sucked. I hate hearing it. I really want to help everybody. I try to add my opinions and a lot of it get down to the bottom of it. But a lot of times people say, you know what? I've been in business 20 years. It's like the worst year ever. You've gotten stagnant. That's what has happened. But people don't want to hear that. They want to hear it's the economy. It's somebody else's fault. It just can't make money. Yet your neighbor, your competition, has been doubling his company religiously. Religiously. I have a couple of customers in um, a state that are in the same area. They're within like 45 minutes of each other. Super friends. They're very, very friendly people. Talking with both of them at separate occasions, one of them is just phenomenally doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling and hiring and doubling and just getting bigger all the time. And the other one, has been losing points every month. They've been going down in size every month. They're like, I don't know, man. Just see, you know, kind of weather probably right now. People are just like worried about the presidency and that kind of gas prices, you know, milk. But yeah, both people in the same industry who know each other are doing opposite things. Do you think that one of them has better control of their business than the other? Both awesome guys and um, super rad. They're not uh, not bad friends. But if that's the case, do you think it's your control? You control a business. You can do all of these things. If you're like, I'm too busy, I don't have time. No, you're capped. You're not too busy. Your priorities are out cleaning windows. And if that's your priority, awesome. Do that. Don't get out of the field. Don't do any of this extra stuff. If you don't want to grow, fine. But don't say you're too busy to do the things that real businesses do. That's just not fair to yourself. Right? Anyway, I'm a dummy. There you go. I'm off my high horse. If you haven't yet used me as your rep, shameless plug, yes. I am begging for your orders because you're awesome and I want you to be awesome. And I have, not in front of me, but a limited edition cool kid sticker that I want to give you because you listen to this and you're a cool kid. So if you put an order in for me, tell me you want a sticker, but uh, text me. Text me what you want or save your cart. My number, save my number in your phone. It's 862-312-2026. Got it? 862-312-2026. Save it. Jersey, WCR. Next time you need something, just type in WCR. Put window cleaning after it. I don't care. Find me. Text me. All the time. Questions. Literally, I get questions. People are like, hey, man, I got this hard water. Uh, I sent you a picture. What do you think on this? Like, what can we do? Cool. Here's what I would do. That's what I do all day, every day. I text hundreds of window cleaners a day. Literally, with texts and calls, hundreds of different window cleaners a day. It's crazy, and it's awesome, but that's what I do. You're never bothering me. All right, well, I only had like a $100 order, $50 order, I don't wanna bug you. Yes, you're not bugging me. I make money by putting orders in, so please let me put all of your orders in. I would like to have some money. And again, speaking of money, if you have an extra $69 that you want to be better, that's a year subscription to an actual paper magazine all about window cleaning, all about window cleaning. It's phenomenal, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, Go and get it, the redesign issue is out now, awcmag.com, and if you like the stickers, by the way, uh, there is a bundle pack right now for sale to get a whole bunch of these sticker sheets, so if you want to go there, awcmag.com, you can buy stickers, get the subscription, do all that stuff, but more importantly, until next week, Go out there and make sure to do the things your business needs, but even more important, go out there and be 